Hello, this is Les Walkling and welcome to our studio and this short introduction to Kants and Infinities, Barata Prestige 2. This new paper is a substantial upgrade from its original formulation. So let's break down what this means into its physical, optical, chemical and aesthetic qualities and then look at what images and applications might most benefit from these material advantages. Of course, these findings are my own, and though I can't claim any relevance beyond that, I nevertheless hope they share something of my methodology and aesthetic priorities, and inspire you to undertake your own investigation into what most matters in your own practice. At 340 GSM, Variety Prestige 2's weight is unchanged from its original formulation and remains the heaviest of all Kants and Infinity's photographic papers. Smaller prints, such as an A4 or A3 image, will feel and appear almost as though they were already mounted, thereby adding a refined and finished air to their presence. In larger prints, the greater weight and thickness provides noticeably enhanced surface continuity, especially if the prints are float-mounted or pinned to studio and gallery walls. At 400 microns, Barita Prestige 2 is still by far the thickest photographic paper Kants and Infinity offer, in part to the addition of cotton fibres to the traditional alpha cellulose base. Barita Prestige 2 therefore exhibits a very different feel and presence compared with Barita Photographique 2 at 305 microns, and is also subtly different to the original Barita Prestige at 370 microns. A criticism of the original Barata Prestige was that its increased weight and thickness contradicted the addition of supple cotton fibres and resulted in an even more difficult to handle paper compared with the lighter and thinner 100% alpha cellulose Barata Photographique. Large prints were also prone to curl aggressively, especially those made towards the end of a roll where the paper is at its tightest diameter and particularly challenging was the reloading of partially used rolls in large format printers. Barita Prestige 2 appears to have addressed these concerns, with less unruly curl and improved flatness in sheets, and given Barita Prestige 2 is now available in 60-inch wide rolls, these improved handling characteristics are even more welcome. Another remarkable and quite surprising change is Barita Prestige 2's white point, which exhibits no fluorescence and therefore appears more or less the same under different light sources, which is somewhat unusual for a Barita paper. This is also profoundly different to the appearance of the original Barita Prestige, which was moderately fluorescent and significantly more fluorescent than the original Barita Photographique. And while Barita Photographique 2 maintains a similar level of fluorescence to its original formulation, Barita Prestige 2 contains no optical brightening agents in either its paper base nor its ink receptor coating, rendering it much closer in appearance to the paper white of non Barita Photographic paper. Therefore, we now have an important aesthetic difference between Barita Photographic 2's traditional cool toned paper white and Barita Prestige 2, whose perfectly neutral paper white ensures even the slightest colour distinctions, including subtle toning effects in the tradition of the fine black and white print, are all magnificently revealed, even when viewed under UV-rich illumination. Unfortunately, it is rather difficult to obtain a satisfactory print-to-screen match with fluorescing OBA-enhanced papers. Graphics monitors, like this ASO Color Edge monitor, neither contain optical brightening agents nor emit UV radiation. Therefore, when a monitor's whiteness is matched to the fluorescing whiteness of an OBA-enhanced paper, the other colors do not match so well, and vice versa. When the primary and secondary colors match, the paper white and neutrals don't. These complications are difficult to correct even with the advanced manual controls of an ASO Color Edge monitor. Therefore, Barita Prestige provides a huge practical soft proofing advantage, without compromising its other beautiful Barita qualities, 
such as its peerless, smooth, soft gloss surface, high optical resolution, and traditional darkroom baryta paper look and feel. I've also found, under a variety of 5000 degree Kelvin correlated colour temperature light sources, that it is easier to match Baryta Prestige 2's paper white to an ISO 12646 calibrated monitor. Baryta Prestige 2, with Epson Ultrachrome Pro Inks, produces a superb neutral rendering, as can be seen in this grey ramp printed with the Epson printer driver's default settings and the print of our six-step grey wedge is already so close to its input values that the accurate profiling of Baryta Prestige 2 becomes quite straightforward and exceptionally accurate. Measuring the surface gloss confirms my visual analysis, where Baryta Prestige 2's exceptionally beautiful soft gloss is more glossy than its original formulation, and is now quite similar to the surface gloss of Baryta Photographic 2. Both Baryta 2 papers also have a surface gloss significantly higher than platine fibre rag, which further clarifies and distinguishes their aesthetic advantages. The new Baryta Prestige 2's paper base also exhibits a superb smoothness, contributing to its luxurious feel, though this is only likely to be experienced when handling smaller prints but is nevertheless an important quality, especially in the grand tradition of modernist fine art black and white photography, where smooth surfaces, tones and transitions are often desired. The original Baryta Photographique revealed significant bronzing with Canon Pro Inks, while Epson Ultrachrome Pro Inks produced virtually no bronzing at all. And while the original Baryta Prestige moderated this problem, now on Baryta Prestige 2, the Canon inks are almost indistinguishable from Epson Ultrachrome Pro inks, at least as far as bronzing is concerned. The Baryta Prestige 2's gamut volume for our standard custom profiles is enormous, at over 900,000 colours for our Epson Shore Colour P900, and over 857,000 colours for our Shaw colour P20,000. However, compared with the original Baryta Prestige gamut, this also represents an approximate 3% reduction in total gamut volume. Kant's and Infinity's generic Epson Shaw colour P900 profiles show a similar reduction in gamut volume on Baryta Prestige 2, as do their generic profiles for a Canon Pro 1000. However, in practice, this is insignificant, in the sense that we can't show any meaningful difference in actual wide gamut prints. And compared with other Kant's and Infinity papers, only Platine Fibre Rag has a larger gamut volume with the same ink set and printer settings. All Kant's and Baryta papers produce excellent maximum black densities that slightly surpass even Kant's and Platine Fibre Rag's incredibly rich blacks with both our Epson Ultrachrome Pro and Canon Pro pigment ink sets. Even slightly deeper blacks can be obtained on an Epson Shore Colour P900 with its carbon black printer setting, which overprints light grey ink in the darkest areas. For example, at a printer resolution of 5760 by 1440 dpi, Baryta Prestige 2 produced an average visual density of 2.49, while carbon black with its enhanced black overcoat, increased the visual density to more than 2.53. This increased D-max is clearly visible in the print, especially when viewed in favourable lighting conditions, though is more difficult to accurately convey in this video. Complete ink encapsulation on some gloss and semi-gloss papers can be problematic, especially at lower printer DPI settings. But even the Canon Pro Photo Black ink at 1200 by 1200 dpi is well encapsulated by Baryta Prestige 2's Microporous Ink Receptor Coating, even better with the Epson Ultrachrome Pro Photo Black ink, as illustrated in this test conducted 10 minutes after printing, where dragging the Baryta Prestige 2's Ink Receptor Coating over the black patch hardly affects it. Comparing the extremes of our printing gamut, 
just paper white and a black serif font, shows the enhanced presence and dimensionality Baraita Prestige 2 imparts on our images when compared with a resin-coated commercial paper like Canson Photo Luster. It is not that the text is not sharply rendered on Photo Luster, just that its overall appearance is flat, dull and lifeless when compared with Baraita Prestige 2's glowing internal presence and enhanced dimensionality. This fosters an illusion that the text is floating above or beyond the paper itself, and that we can see around or past it. For example, in this melancholic image from our Southwest Light project, my Hasselblad's multi-shot digital back and stunning optical resolution is beautifully portrayed on Baraita Prestige 2's peeler surface, and without in any way appearing forced or artificial, nor needing any additional application sharpening. Therefore, the Hasselblad's stunning multi-shot resolution is faithfully preserved in all of its original optical glory. The site of his last embrace from 1986 was originally a beautiful, subtle, split-toned 8x10 inch silver gelatine contact print on a citified Amadol-developed Kodak Azo paper. Now drum scanned and prepared for digital printing, Baraita Prestige 2 produces a remastered facsimile whose fidelity has to be seen to be believed. Apart from the slight differential between the pigment's gloss and the gloss of the paper, it is hard to believe this is not a silver-rich darkroom print. And once again, Baraita Prestige 2's D50 neutral paper white promotes and clarifies the most subtle toning and tinting effects. Another analogue image, 10 years is a long time that passes quickly from 1993, comprises multiple overlaid images, combination printed in the darkroom, to create a depth and dimensionality only platine fibre rag was capable of digitally emulating. Except that platine's ever so subtle stochastic surface texture never quite matched my original silver gelatine print surfaces, though platine's rendering was otherwise utterly superb. But Baraita Prestige 2 changes everything, and even in this small test print the rendering is exactly right, and when restored to its original 34-inch square print size, it will be breathtaking. In this sense, Baraita Prestige 2 is either conferring the finest personality or perhaps it is simply not getting in the way and not imposing any personality at all. Either way, it is so successful in its rendering, where every emotional nuance and gesture reigns free. It is therefore also a brilliant aid in fine art reproduction, where we are creating a work of art of a work of art to combine both objective metrics with creative subjectivity in order to represent not only the look and feel of the original work, but also its artistic intent, art history and philosophical endeavour. Therefore, whether our intention is the production of guide prints for curators or publication, or the production of limited editions, this is a superb paper for when the dynamics and gamut of a Baraita photographic paper are called for. In original works of art, Baraita Prestige 2 helps confer a profound multi-dimensional sense of time and space, and so much so that I almost have to return to Photoshop and tone it down, as is the case in my image of the abandoned Port Hedland Drive-In from our Pilbara project. Printed on a commercial paper like Canson Photo Luster Premium RC, it looks perfectly fine and well represented. That is, until you compare the same image printed on Baraita Prestige 2. The increased sense of depth, dimensionality and presence on Baraita Prestige 2 is utterly amazing, and the effect even more so when seen in person, compared with the limitations of this video reproduction. Of course, the oldest trick in the history of visual art that helps a picture to capture hearts and minds independently of what it is a picture of, is the creation of the illusion of what, by definition, can't be in a flat, still, silent, two-dimensional image. That is the evocation and sensation of our everyday habitation of time and space. And there is no shortage of such effects in Baraita Prestige too. From superbly rendering the finest details and smoothest transitions to this enhanced depth, dimensionality and presence.
even the chaotic, frenzied drawing in a recent image at the colonial verge of the southern Australian bush is beautifully presented and profoundly enhanced, without upsetting its gentle and subtle colour palette. This is a remarkable rendering. Not only does Barata Prestige 2 harmoniously unite these competing and opposed drawing and colour compositions, it also amplifies the picture's artistic intent. That is, the metaphor, autobiography and geography the image embodies on our behalf, and also beautifully preserved across Barita Prestige 2's ever-so-elegant surface is the exquisite precision of a stunning Rodenstock HR Digeron lens and Phase 1 IQ4 150 digital back, where nothing gets in the way and everything prospers. This is printmaking both modern and traditional at its exquisite best, and Barita Prestige 2 is a most welcome and valued contribution to the history of photography, and especially the tradition of the fine photographic print. I hope my personal exploration of Barita Prestige 2 has been both insightful and helpful, and I wish you all the best with your adventures in digital printmaking. <laughs>